Hello, so today I kind of just wanted to do an introduction of my patio gardening space just so you guys can get an idea moving forward about the light that I'm keeping my orchids in. So I have sort of, uh, I guess two or three growing areas on my patio. Um, this first one right here is a south facing exposure and because I live in a condo community, it doesn't get sun throughout the whole day, especially in summer because we have my garage back here and then some taller buildings back behind me that cover the light um, sort of later in the day. And also I don't think this is a completely south facing exposure so the sun kind of comes up at like a diagonal angle in summer and it kind of messes with the lighting. But um, this is the kind of lighting that it gets. It gets this early morning lighting about 9 to 12 in summer and during winter paradoxically because the sun's at a different angle i get more light on this area during winter than i do during summer more direct light but the bright and direct light of course is longer throughout the day during summer anyway in the back i don't think you can see it too clearly but um, behind that chair is my aliwampello ciliaris formerly known as aloe ciliaris that is actually my oldest plant. I've had it since sixth grade, which for me is 2006. So it's quite an old plant. Then on top of that little chair, I have my Sedum Reflexum. Right under that, I have my Dendrobium Kingianum. Right in front of the chair right there, that big one is an Aloe Arborescence. I have a little Rosemary down in front. I have my Gambelia Speciosa. I have a pink plumeria down there which I'm really excited about because it's putting out three new growths from the base. And then my columnar cacti right there are golden torch cactus or let me see the name on this one. So I have it written down here, Echinopsis spaciana. Then I have these spineless apuntia right here which are apuntia cacanapa. Then I have a little iris in there. And these in front down here are agave americana. So the only place I'm really keeping orchids right now or even thinking about keeping Hoya is where my Dendrobium kingianum is under that chair. I have been considering hanging my Hoya on those little slats right there. But um, I don't know what's going on with that. I'm still thinking whether or not it's gonna be a, a good idea, whether or not they're gonna get burnt, um, but I'm leaning towards they're going to get burnt, which is why I'm kind of going to try to make this under the chair area, which is kind of small. I'm trying to make it my little orchid or Hoya growing area, but I do have bigger areas over on this wall, which I will be showing you later, once the sun has lit up this part. So I'm gonna be filming this in kind of little blocks. And this is the first block, which is my south to maybe southeastern facing exposure. And I will see you in the next part. Bye. Hello, so here we are on the second part of my outdoor patio garden. And we are looking at the west facing exposure. And right here I have, as you can see, I have my trellis right over there in the corner. And this is a medium sized patio table that's kind of mesh a little bit. And I have a couple plants on there. So let me bring you to a better angle so we can kind of see all the plants that we have on here. Okay, so we are here and I can show you the plants that I have up on the top of the table. So way in the back under this window right here i have a spider plant along the back i have some rosemary and then i have a cursula tetragona right there um, down here we have um, another spider plant here is my penstema heterophyllus and then right here we have a salvia splendens which this one i credit with putting me on the plant growing journey because it was one of the first flowering plants. Actually, I think it's the first flowering plant that I've had that I've been able to grow from just a tiny little, I think it was in a 
two inch seedling plug, so it was really tiny when I got it. But um, love this little baby right here. And then right, this one right here is one of my mom's plants, I'm not sure what that is. And those Echeverias and Kalankoi right there in that pot, also my mom's. So next I'm going to show you what I have under the table, which is mostly orchids. <laughs> Just like my name, but it's mostly orchids, and I think we have some other plants down there. But I'm going to show you that soon. So here is underneath the table that's in my western facing exposure. And before I get started explaining the orchids that I have under here, I also wanted to show you or say that this gets about so this gets two to three hours of direct sunlight. However, because of the direction that it's pointing and the way the sun goes across the patio, it's the sun is like constantly moving. It's like when the sun is moving the, or when the shadow is moving the quickest. So they get about two hours of direct sunlight each, but it's just over the two hours. So right here, I have my Cymbidium. Back there I have one of my Zygonese and Murasaki Komachi divisions. Back there I have one of my Kaisis Lamenghea divisions. And actually that one has a little bud on it, one of the little new growths. I will show you the bud if it blooms. However, <laughs> I just because it's outside, I don't want to count my chickens before they hatch or however that saying goes. This little Vanda right here is a Vanda Somthawil. It is a Vanda Morellii var variety Rotorii crossed with a Denisoniana. Down here I have my uh, RLC Sonya Green. So annoying. It grows well, it grows beautifully. It's adapted to the full Leca semi hydro that I have it in. However, it refuses to bloom. <laughs> And I've had it for a while, so since it's so big, it's like, it probably takes up a good foot and a half on my shelves. Since it's so big and it refuses to bloom, I have put it outside where hopefully it will live its best life. <laughs> right behind that I have a, a Catlea Lodigisei, and that I got from, or excuse me, Lodigesei. And that one I got from Sorella Orchids. I also got this uh, Denisoniana cross from Sorella Orchids as well. And then down there I have a Strugly Epidendrum. For some reason, I mean I can grow a lot of different orchids, but some just escape me. Like the Epidendrums. They're just not, they just don't fit with my care, with the way that I care for my plants. Most of my plants do well under my care. Some of them, like the Epidendrums, Miltoniopsis, even Catacetums, don't do so well with. But it's still alive, it's still pushing out new growth, so whatever. And then right here, this big lady right here is a No ID Green Cymbidium, uh, excuse me, No ID Green Flowered Cymbidium. And this one I keep here all year long, and it grows outside all year long. All of these orchids right here, I have just put out this summer, and they're kind of extra divisions to grow outside and see if these plants can handle outdoor temperatures here in Ventura, California. So far, they seem to be doing okay. All of these should be good in colder temperatures. Usually we get down to low 50s, high 40s um, during summer at the lowest, but with climate change, I don't know if we're even gonna be going that low anymore, so we'll see how these do outside. So that is kind of it for now. I'm going to show you guys a trellis later once the sun is on the trellis, and then I have a few more plants up this way um, to show you as well, but that will be later. And that ends this segment, and I'll be back shortly for the rest of it. Hello, so this is the second part of my western exposure here on the patio. And here's my trellis. I have mostly Hoyas and some of the orchids that I know can take lower light conditions. So I'll just go through them right here. 
Up at the top, this one right here is my Maple Conda. This is my Hoya Linearis. This is my Hori Carii. This is a. Uh, what is this? This has a weird name. Not a weird name, just a hard to pronounce name. I think it's Hawaiian or something. It's an Iwanagara Halehi or something like that. I'll post it, um, I'll have it up here on the screen. Um, but this is an Iwanagara. I got this from, I got this from LA Orchid John on eBay. The Mabel Conda and my Hoya Linearis are from Sorella Orchids. My Hoya Carrie I got from Green Thumb. This right here is a Maxillariella tenifolia. That is a division that I got from Norman's Orchids and it has not ever done well for me and I think it's actually dying right now. Which is great because I've had it for over a year and at this point it's kind of out here to either die or thrive and I think it's going in the die direction. So down here is my Hoya Diversifolia from Sorella Orchids. So underneath those, I have my Hoya Carnosa Crinkle 8. I have an Aridis Falcata crossed with, no, this is an Aridis Odorata crossed with a Vanda Falcata. This is my Hoya Australis Lisa from Sorella Orchids. These three are from Sorella Orchids. Um, this is my Lelia Anceps from Norman's Orchids. This is my Brasso Epidendrum Green Dragon from Sorella Orchids, and down here at the very, very bottom, that little guy is an Epidendrum. And that's a cutting that I got from one of the houses that I was staying at when I used to go to Cal Poly Pomona. So that is my Western Exposure, and actually I'm gonna take you over to show you these last two plants over here which is another Hoya and a Vanda. So this up here at the top is my very biggest Hoya. It is a humongous Hoya Australis that I got from Home Depot. And let me show you under the rafters or whatever these things are up here, because it is just monstrous and it's growing all up and through here. I have to pull it back from up here every once in a while just to make sure that it doesn't grow too far into the woodwork up here. But it is just a humongous, here's my hand for reference, it's just a humongous Hoya. So that's my Hoya Australis and right beneath that I have my Vanda Brunea which I have pictures of on my Instagram page, Mostly Orchids. So yeah, that's my Vanda Brunea. I'm keeping that in, Ooh, actually it has, oh, well there's a spider web in there, so I don't want to disturb it um, because girl spiders are friends, but it's chunky bark and I'm at least watering it once a week. Sometimes I'll get the little hose over here, put it on mist and give it some supplemental watering. But since we're right by the ocean, the humidity is usually above the 50s. So I don't worry about watering it more than once a week because I think it can take that. And then just down here, I have my Cattleya Irene Tail Like Hang Little Fireball from Norman's Orchids. And my Vanda up here is from Sorella's. So that is, um, oh, and this one, this wall is actually a north facing exposure, but because of the way that it's set up, these hanging plants right here are getting some of the afternoon light that's coming from the west. And they actually get morning light because right up above behind me is my mom's window. And in the morning, the light reflects um, down from the window up there onto these orchids right here, um, orchids and Hoya right here. So they get some light that way. So it's actually a medium to higher light exposure, especially for the Vanda and the Cattleya that are getting 
direct light as opposed to my Australis that's up above. And as you can see, it doesn't really get any direct light. So that is my outdoor growing area and the areas where I'll be putting my orchids. So in the future, I can say it's on my western exposure, it's on my southern exposure, it's on my northern exposure outdoors, and you can refer back to this video and you can see exactly what I'm talking about. So thank you for watching. I know this was a long video, but hopefully you made it all the way through and I will see you in the next video. Bye.